we were in a bad way, but we all had same problems of no water on the way or the wild animals or getting sick and no one to remain behind because no one is going to stop to wait for you till you get well. So you just leave them behind. And um, for a year, we did not have real food. So we had to survive on leaves. So you had to know which kind of a plant you can pick to cook or eat like that. And there are some kind of plants you check the, ear, ear, the leaves of the plant and you dig the root of it. Uh, that's what we had to do. There was no um, aid, there was no food, there was no sort of formal support in place for them. There was no camps, there was no um, shelters. So they, they moved through different parts of South Sudan as they were fleeing from where the, where the front line moved to um, and spent about 12 months shifting around to different places and along the way they had to cross rivers and, and hundreds and hundreds of them drowned in the rivers. I remember people, especially those who cannot swim, holding their hands together, hoping that because if they hold their hands together, they might make it across the river. And guess what? All those blackheads just disappear under the water and you don't see them again. And then there's another lion coming in and then you, just, you don't see them again. And the lucky ones that swim, you see them on the other side of the river. And uh, what do you do about it? That's how it was. There was no food, so they died of starvation, they died of illnesses, of, they were subject to wild animals, um, if there was hyenas and, and lions, um, also crocodiles crossing rivers and things, they were often that, that took numbers of them as well. And we were told every day, like there was parade every day, help will come. Dr. John Manam, help will come. Your leader is not asleep. Your leader is not asleep. Dr. John Garang is not asleep. He's working on something. And that's what we were fed every day, and we believed it. And uh, eventually, some of us made it, not everyone made it. Quite a large percentage died, and only, they say about 20,000 ended up in, in Kenya, in the refugee camp in Kakuma. But numbers are so approximate that no one really has a good idea of how many started out and how many died along the way and how many made it in the end. When the Red Cross finally came, we were waited like uh, malnourished children, or maybe we were children anyway. But there was this way that you go on hold. I remember my weight was 32 at the age of about 15. 